Okay, today I'm going over TMSCA High School Number Sense Test Number 6, which is a UILC test, and this was given December 7th, 2019. So this is uh, Test C for 2019 and 2020. And the general instructions are given here. Um, you will have 10 minutes to take this test. There are 80 problems, and all problems are to be solved mentally. No scratch work only the answer may be written. So while I'm working through this, I will maybe make some notes to explain it, but you should only write the answer if you're actually taking this in actual contest. So let's take a look at the first column of problems, which is one through 18. So problem number one is 2019 plus 2020. You can add 19 plus 20, that would be 39. And then 20 plus 20, that's 40. So that would be answer for number one. Uh, number two, you can subtract four minus four, you know the answer is gonna end in a zero, and then 83 minus the 38, that's 45. Number three, you're multiplying by 11, actually it's 1.1. So if you multiply by 11 times 56, you write the six down first. Five plus six is 11, so you write a one, carry a one. 5 plus 1 is 6. But remember, it's 1.1, so I have to write the decimal there. So, so the answer is 61.6. Number 4, 6 times 24 divided by 18 minus 12. Some students will take 6 times 24 is 144 divided by 18 is 8. 8 minus 12 is a negative 4. Now, you could take uh, the 18 and divide 6 divided by 18, that's 1 third, and then take 1 third of 24, which is 8. 8 minus 12 is a negative 4. Okay, number 5 says 3 eighths is equal to what decimal? Well, 3 eighths is 0.375, and you should memorize that, and 0.375, not 0 0.375, just 0.375. So if you were to put a zero here, that would be counted wrong. That's an extraneous zero. So 0.375 is the only correct answer for this since you want the answer as a decimal, okay? Number six, 17 over 200, or 17 divided by 200. Now, as a percent, you would multiply by 100, so it's 17 over two, but they want the answer as a mixed number, so you cannot write 17 over two you cannot write 8.5. It has to be eight and one half. Again, because the answer has to be a mixed number. Not 8.5, eight and a half is the only correct answer here, okay? Number seven, what is 0 0.0625 as a proper fraction? <clears throat> so that's the same thing as six and a quarter percent, which is 1 16th as a proper fraction. Now, if you did not know that six and a quarter percent is one sixteenth, what you might consider is saying, what if I multiply that by 10 and I have 0.625, and now you know that's five eighths, but since I multiply by 10, I actually have to divide by 10 so that I can have 0 0.0625. So five over 80 is one sixteenth. So the answer here was one sixteenth. And again, you cannot uh, do all this writing. I'm only doing this to show you that uh, that's one of the steps in thinking. And you cannot write an equal sign, so I'll erase that. The correct answer was 1 16th. Okay. So the next problem, Roman numeral D, C, V, I. D is 500, C is 600, so you have 600. VI is 6, so it's 600 plus 6, or you could write 606 for that one. Number 9, 3 and 4 fifths divided by 2. You can take 3 and 4 fifths and make that as an improper fraction. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 4 is 19. 19 divided by, 19 over 5 divided by 2 is the same thing as 19 over 5 times 1 half. So that would be 19 and your denominator five times two would be 10. 
So you could write 19 over 10, you could write 1.9 or 1 and 9 tenths. All of those answers would be correct since they are not specifying improper fraction or proper fraction or mixed number or anything like that. Number 10 is a start problem, which is an approximation. And in this one, you have to be careful because you can round off and you have to be careful because these are small numbers. So 1919 minus 1991. So that, that's 20 minus 90, that's a negative 70. So if I take 120 minus 70, that's 50. And negative 190 plus 50 is negative 140. And that should be within the range. You get plus or minus 5%, and then as well within the range for this one. Okay, so number 11, 2 and 1 half plus 3 and 1 third as a mixed number. So 1 half plus 1 third, that's 5 over 6. And then 2 plus 3 is 5. So... You can add one half and one third by just doing a cross multiplication. One times three, this would be three. And one times two, this would be two. So three plus two is five, five over six. Okay, so number 12. The arithmetic mean of 27, 22, and blank is 26. So you're gonna add 27 plus 22 plus x divided by three equals 26. So 26 times 3 is 78, and then subtract 59, and that's going to give you 29. Now, there is another way of doing this problem, and so what you might consider is mentally say, okay, if I need an average of 26, right here I am plus 1, 1 over 26, 27, but 22 is 4 less then 26, so I'm at minus four here, and I need to have a zero so that it could average out. So one minus four is a negative three, so that means I need to add three to the 26. 26 plus three gives me the 29. So this is another way of doing it. To me, that would be a little quicker and easier is to just count how many uh, it's over or under 26, and then whatever you need, you add it back to 26. So I have minus 3, so I'm 3 short, so I had 3 to 26. The answer was 29 for number 12. Number 13, what is 18 squared? 18 times 18 is 324. Now, it is possible that you're starting a number since and have not memorized 18 squared. I would recommend you memorize the first 20 or 30 squares just to get started. But if you want to do a number that's squared that is not memorized, you can take a number that's close to 20, close to 18, which is 20. So you could do 20 times 16. So what I'm doing is I'm adding two to the 18 to make it 20. So I have to subtract two to get 16. So now I can do 16 times 20, but then since I added two, subtract two, I've got an extra four there that I'm gonna have to count for. So I'm gonna add four. 16 times 20 is 320 plus 4 gives you the 324, okay? Now, for this example, I'm going to skip over to 16. Normally, you want to work these problems in order, but I'm looking at 16 as 54 squared. And there's several ways that you can do that. First of all, 54 is 3 times 18. So if I square the 3, I've got a factor of 9. So I can multiply 324 times 9. That seems kind of lengthy, but what I could do is I could do the same thing that I did on 13. For 54, I'm gonna subtract four, I'm gonna have 50, and then 54 plus four, I'm gonna have 58. And since I have plus four minus four, that's four squared, 16. I have to add 16 to account for that since I'm squaring 54. So 50 times 58, I could do double and half, I'll double this one and I'll half this one, half of 58 is 29. So I have 2,900 plus 16, the answer is 2,916. How cool is that? If you like this type of video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you wanna see more like this, smash the notification bell and leave a comment there. Let me know if you like this and you wanna see more like this, I'll continue to make more videos for you. Let's go back to number 14. 
7.5 times 4.8. Well, when I see a problem like that, I'm going to think of 0. 0.75 times 48. What I do is I multiply 48 by 10 and divide 7.5 by 10. So I'm just moving the decimal over here and I'm moving this over one to the left, one to the right. So now I wind up doing three fourths of 48. Four goes into 48, 12 times, 12 times three is 36. So 7.5 times 4.8 is exactly 36. That's number sense, right? 220 less, 20% 20 of 220. So what I really need is just 80% of 220. So I'm going to be thinking, what is 80% of 220? So I'm going to multiply 80% or 0.8 times 220, which is the same thing as 8 times 22. So I need to multiply 8 times 22. And 22 is made up of factors of 2 and 11. So I'm going to do 8 times 2 times 11. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 11 is 176. And that was the answer for number 15, 176. So it's an easy way to multiply by 22 is multiply by 2 and then times 11. And you get 176. Number 17 here. Number 17, we're looking for the least common multiple for 8, 14, and 20. And so what we could do is we could say, take 2 at a time. The least common multiple for 8 and 14, you have 2 and 7, and you have 2 cubed. So 8 times 7, this would be 56. So now it's between 56 and 20. Now, I notice that 4 goes into both. So I'm going to divide 20 divided by 4, which is 5. 5 times 56 is going to be 280, and that would be the answer for this one, 280. And so uh, least common multiple is going to be, for 56 and 20, it's going to be the product of the two divided by the greatest common factor. And so anytime you want to find the least common multiple, and you have two numbers, n1 and n2, you can multiply the two and divide by the greatest common factor. So in this case, I was looking at 56 and 20. And the greatest common factor is 4, since 4 goes into both. And I divided 20 divided by 4 is 5. And then 5 times 56 gave us a 280. Okay. We're winding down to the last problem in this column. And let me know if you'd like to see more of these. But for this video, we'll stop at column 1, number 18. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out an 18, and it leaves me 61 minus 63 times 18. 61 minus 63 is 18. 18 times 18, we just did that, that's 324. So the correct answer was 324. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments. And that will be it for today.